Well, let's come back to the microbiome piece, another defense system. We quickly touched on it before, but let's get really practical and specifically from a metabolism weight loss piece, what we want to do to support the microbiome and how the physiology works there. Okay. Look, um, almost everyone who's interested in health and wellness has heard of a microbiome. Microbiome is gut bacteria. It's actually bacteria outside of our gut as well, but most of it's in our gut. And, you know, a lot of people don't actually appreciate where in the gut the microbiome actually is located. It's in the last part of your gut in a little pouchy area in your colon called the cecum. That's spelled C-E-C-U-M. Most of our gut bacteria is actually found in that spot. It's kind of like a, the, the, the cave of, uh, of the, the, the corridor of the microbiome. That's an ecosystem. And that ecosystem is composed of oh, somewhere about for almost 33, 39 trillion bacteria. Now, we know some of them, but there's more that we're discovering all the time. And by the way, it's not just bacteria. It's viruses. It's fungi. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's archaea. There's a whole other species of organism that lives in our gut. But let's talk about bacteria for a second. We now know that certain bacteria activate our metabolism, all right? Uh, and when you're missing those bacteria, one of them is called Acromantia mucinophila, when you're missing that healthy bacteria, what happens is your metabolism doesn't function properly. And so you're not drawing in energy the right way. Your fat starts to grow out of control. Uh, you know, you've got, you're not, not, even when you're eating regularly, you might not actually absorb all your energy efficiently. And so you can actually, your blood sugars can rise, you become... Meta, you get developed metabolic syndrome. And so the lack of certain bacteria we know um, can be problematic. And there are certain foods that can grow back acromantia, like pomegranate juice, cranberry juice, uh, Concord grape juice, for example, are, are, are ways to actually grow back and help nurture some of these bacteria. We also know, by the way, that when you have extra body fat, remember I told you that inflammation leaks out? I mean, th think about like a, a garden hose. You're filling up a, a, a pot in your garden and you forget about it. And the, the, the water overflows the pot and now it's everywhere. It's got dirt everywhere as well. If your fat inflammation spills out over the sides and leaks everywhere, very, very dangerous, by the way, that situation. It actually is po that, that fat's poison in your blood or it can poison your liver. Um, that's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, leaking fat that poisons our organs, highly inflammatory situation. All right. It turns out that our gut microbiome, healthy gut microbiome, all right, not poisoned with too much sugar, artificial sweeteners, ultra processed foods, all the things that I, sodas, things that really harm our gut microbiome. If you're good, healthy, vibrant gut microbiome, if you have too much body fat and the inflammation leaks up, guess what? Your gut microbiome, which is a health defense system, lowers inflammation. It basically is like the fire, um, like the fire department to help put out the inflammation, put out that fire. All right. If your gut microbiome is damaged, it can't put out that fire. And not only, and now not only is your metabolism screwed up, all right, and your fat is starting to grow and 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 mess up your metabolism further, but the inflammation is leaking out, and now you don't have the fire department to put out that fire. So for somebody who feels like right now their microbiome is you know all over the place and they've destroyed a lot of it, living an unhealthy lifestyle. You mentioned the specific. I think you said cranberry juice, pomegranate juice, Concord grape juice. When it comes to the acromantia. What do you recommend in a general sense to rebuild up that diversity of the microbiome to help tame inflammation as a whole? Yeah, very important. And, and this is true for every aspect of your health, and it helps you resist virtually every type of disease that's known. And that is take care of your gut microbiome like you would if you had a pet dog or a pet cat or a goldfish or a parakeet, which is that you've got to feed, you've got to feed your critters. And the thing is that our gut microbiome is really part of who we are. When we eat food, every decision we make of the food we eat, our human cell, our human bodies are going to absorb some of the nutrients. But anything that we don't absorb goes down, down, down to your cecum, the part of your colon where your gut bacteria, and it feeds your gut bacteria. So you don't want to actually, you want to cut down or cut out the foods that actually harm your gut bacteria. Do not piss off. Do not, uh, do not, um, uh, do not uh, chase away those good neighbors. You don't want to evacuate them from the neighborhood. You want to keep them there and you want to keep them healthy, feel secure. So what are the foods that actually um, uh, are, are harm them? Too much alcohol, sodas harm them, ultra-processed foods, uh, ultra-processed meats. Look, I mean, all the things that we already know, 
that people are bludgeoning us over the head with that are not so healthy. We now know one of the reasons that they're not so healthy is they really kind of destroy, they damage our gut microbiome. So more importantly, what are the foods that can restore that for somebody that goes, well, you know, am I screwed because I've been messing with my, 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 my gut microbiome is not so healthy? No way. We have really amazing resiliency to grow back a good neighborhood and get those good characters back in our neighborhood. So what are some general principles of doing this? Well, one thing I'll tell you from a beverage perspective, what should I be drinking uh, to help build back my gut microbiome? I call it my book, The Holy Trinity of Beverages. These are the beverages that can really do no wrong in and of themselves. Water, okay, you can hydrate your gut microbiome, just like it be dried out. Tea, green tea, slightly fermented tea like oolong, black tea, even like an ultra-fermented probiotic tea. There's actually a probiotic tea, which is cool, called Pu-er, P-U apostrophe E-R-H, E-E-R-H. Pu-er tea is an actual fermented tea that has its own tea bacteria. That's a healthy bacteria, good for your gut microbiome. Coffee, another great beverage that actually feeds your gut microbiome with its bioactives. These are all prebiotics that are found in uh, uh, in these beverages. So you got to drink something rather than you know, like swap out the soda and go for water, tea, or coffee. That's one way of actually you know starting to make a, a, a concrete step towards helping your gut microbiome recover. Second, you know as a general rule, your gut microbiome loves to eat fiber. The food you feed it, the kibble. You know, think about your dog, uh, your pet dog. You know, whether it's dry food or wet food or raw food. Look. What back, gut bacteria likes, they, they like fiber, dietary fiber. Where do you get dietary fiber? Greens, salad greens, uh, carrots, even mushrooms, soft, soft things in the produce section also have dietary fiber. Kiwi, a great source of dietary fiber. Some of the softest vegetables you, you can find, avocado. Avocado's got a ton of dietary fiber. So it's not just stringy stuff that you have to pick out of your teeth or floss out of your teeth, but even... Uh, an avocado, you do an avocado toast for breakfast, you're getting some dietary fiber. You are feeding your gut microbiome. And so anybody who's like, you know, what can I do? I don't, I don't know. I must have screwed my gut microbiome. I don't feel so good. Look, first, cut down or cut out the things that are harming your mi- microbiome. That's mostly the ultra processed foods and the sodas and all that kind of stuff. And start adding in some of the stuff that's good for you. And it's a lot of it. And this is what I write about. I take people in my book, Eat to Beat Your Diet, right through the grocery store as if you were like riding in a cart like when you when you were a kid and you rode in the grocery cart and your mom pushed you along. In my book, I want people to realize that in that second section of my book, I invite you into the grocery cart and I take you through an average grocery store and literally just you know, like kind of kibitz and whisper in your ear what to put in a cart that can help your metabolism fight body fat um, and improve your inner health. Dr. Lee, one of the common topics that comes up lately on the podcast when it comes to the microbiome is the short chain fatty acids. So feeding the gut microbiome, they're creating these short chain fatty acids. What I'm curious about is when it comes to those specifically, do they have a role in metabolism and weight loss? Absolutely. So first of all, the let me kind of give you the uh, an easy to understand analogy of of dietary fiber feeding your gut healthy gut bacteria. Now, your gut bacteria need to eat, so you're feeding them the dietary fiber and other natural bioactives that are prebiotics, Uh, and the the bacteria live in your colon. They live in your gut in that area called the cecum. So we, as humans, provide room, cecum, and board prebiotics to our gut bacteria, right? So we're basically landlords for our gut bacteria, and the rent they pay, okay, uh, uh, in exchange for um, you know, uh, being in our uh, being a borders in our body is they pay us with short chain fatty acids. So when we feed them the right way. They hand us a check every single day, and that check, that rent check, is actually called short chain fatty acids. It turns out those short chain fatty acids do a lot of the good stuff um, that the gut, gut gut bacteria actually do. They streamline our metabolism, make our body more sensitive to insulin. They lowers inflammation, helps our body heal, sends signals to our brain. Short chain fatty acids are are sort of the um, they are the um, uh, the units to communicate. That's the currency that uh, our gut microbiome uh, gives us. And so, 
you know, one thing that we're beginning to do is to real, realize that we can measure short chain fatty acids in the body. It's a medical part thing so far, but eventually what I'm excited by is this idea that we are not, you know, we can start to, we already can do this. We can at least get a dipstick picture of what our gut microbiome is. You can get your mi- bi- stool microbiome measured. And in the future, we're going to start to take a look at short chain fatty acids and know how well we're doing. Earlier, when we were talking about a specific strain, we mentioned acromancia when it comes to metabolism. Another one you mentioned in the book is lactobacillus rotori. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about why that one fits into this whole conversation. And you did give us specific examples of different drinks we could have to help grow the acromancia. What can we do to get the lactobacillus rotori going? All right. Well, first of all, lactobacillus rotori. Lactobacillus is... um, a um, very common type of normal, healthy gut bacteria, but it's pretty sensitive to antibiotics. And so lactobacillus ruteri is just one member of the lactobacillus family. It used to be present in all of us, and we used to get it um, uh, from from our moms, right? So basically, moms had lactobacillus ruteri in her colon, and about eight months into pregnancy, um, uh, her uterus uh, uh, coordinates and sends a signal to her colon and says, hey, you know, we're about a month away from delivering a baby. It's time to move some lactobacillus so the baby will have some lactobacillus. So that's how we got it. Now, it's amazing. Um, there are these little blood cells called, called neutrophils. Um, uh, and uh, now we know that these neutrophils um, go down to the colon at around eight months. And they basically are like Ubers. And they pick up lactobacillus into the cell like an Uber driver. And the Uber driver moves from the colon and it navigates its way to the breast by the nipple, and it drops off the passenger, the lactobacillus, by the nipple. And so, when the baby crawls up, comes out, and crawls up to the mom after you know after some skin time to actually have the first suckle of milk, that used to be the point at which moms squirted some of her lactobacillus ruteri into the baby's gut. So generation after generation after generation, that's how we used to have it. Now that was before about 1930 or 40. After 1930 or 40 the advent of antibiotics came into play and babies were getting treated with antibiotics and moms were getting treated with antibiotics and antibiotics are life-saving. But one of the sort of the side effects, the collateral damage is it kills off lactobacillus ruteri. So now it's hard to know who has it and who doesn't have it because gosh, we haven't been even thinking about this unintended consequence of treating infection with antibiotics, right? So overuse of antibiotics. Now here, even judicious use of antibiotics can damage our that member of our gut microbiome. Why is that important? Because research I and other people have done has shown that lactobacillus ruteri in the gut does a lot of really important things. One thing it does is it actually speeds up healing. You have surgery, you have trauma, uh, you know, like you, you cut yourself, you, 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 you have a car accident, you fall off a bike, scrape your knee. Lactobacillus actually speeds up the healing in your body. In fact, it can double the rate of healing in your body when it's actually there in good form. Other thing it does is it actually helps us support your immune system. My gosh, she doesn't want to have a good immune system. You don't have any lactobacillus, you're going to be you're going to be at a disadvantage when it comes to your immune system. Lactobacillus ruteri actually in the lab has shown been shown to resist the development of colon cancer and breast cancer. How about them apples? Like, oh my gosh, here's a bacteria that's been shown to resist the development. It's not a cure, but it actually helps your body defend against colon and breast cancer. Whoa. That's an important bacteria. And then the other thing that's even you know more profound to me is that lactobacillus ruteri has been shown to text message your brain. You've heard about the gut-brain connection, right? People talk about that. Lactobacillus is one of the actors, the good actors, that text message your brain to release social hormones that control our mood. Lactobacillus helps our brain secrete dopamine, serotonin, I mean, all these things that psychiatrists and therapists prescribe drugs for, our gut bacteria writes that prescription invisibly, you know, by sending a message to our brain. Our gut bacteria, lactobacillus, also um, helps our brain release a social hormone called oxytocin. Now, oxytocin happens to be that same hormone that when the baby comes out of the womb and has the first suckle on the nipple to, to breastfeed, there's a huge rush of oxytocin. Um, not surprisingly, it goes whoosh. It helps uh, your breast ducts, um, the milk ducts contract to squirt that milk and lactobacillus into the baby's gut. So that makes a lot of sense given the story I just told you. But oxytocin is also a feel-good hormone. So if you haven't seen 
a friend and you're picking him or her up at the airport and you see them coming out of the, the arrival gate and you, you run up to give them a hug and you feel great about it, that is oxytocin, that feeling, that feel good. Um, we, uh, another time oxytocin comes up, when you have a kiss, not just a peck on the cheek, but a good, deep French kiss, that incredible feeling that's oxytocin being released from your brain. Another time you get oxytocin, when you have an orgasm, for a few seconds, this massive explosion of oxytocin comes surging out of your brain. That's how important lactobacillus is. Lactobacillus helps our brain secrete those natural mood-enhancing chemicals, right? Here we are talking about like mood enhancers and psychotropics, mushrooms and things like that. Here's actually a natural role that our gut bacteria plays and lactobacillus ruderize one of them. So if we've depleted that through, say, we haven't gotten breastfed as a kid and we never picked that up, or I think you mentioned antibiotics will destroy it. Mm. Is there certain foods that we can ingest to rebuild that up? Or is there a supplement we can take? Or so, what do we do? So, so, so the good news is that there are supplements for lactobacillus ruteri that you you know, you know, can take it. I actually take it. I take one of these every day. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting paid to endorse anything. But I can tell you because I did the research. And I, when I looked at that research, I'm like, holy cow, like, why wouldn't I take that lactobacillus ruteri supplement? The other reason I take it, and I take it at night after I brush my teeth, by the way, and I, t- I don't take the adult version, by the way, I take the children's chewable version. And, and when people realize I'm doing it, they're like, why would you want to do that, right? It turns out clinical trials have shown that this lactobacillus ruteri actually uh, uh, is part of the oral mouth microbiome too, and it fights the bacteria that causes cavities. So for me, like you can take a dietary supplement, you can actually chew it up, rinse it out, rinse your mouth, get the bacteria in there, and then swallow it. Now you've actually two shots on goal, once to fight cavities and once for the rest of your body um, at, at, the, at the end of the evening. Now, but there are other dietary sources of lactobacillus ruteri as well. Yogurt, some forms of yogurt actually have it. You have to kind of look around to see which types of yogurt actually have it. Um, sourdough bread, okay. Uh, the the tangy sourness of sourdough bread, that delicious tangy feel. If you like sourdough bread, it's tangy, hence sourdough. Um, uh, actually, because uh, it's a lactic acid, it that acid actually is what makes it tangy. And guess what? The starter for sourdough bread is lactobacillus ruteri, that makes lactic acid. And it secretes it into the dough. So when you bake it, you're actually getting lactobacillus ruteri. And so that actually is another way of actually getting lactobacillus ruteri. And then a lot of people don't know this. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that this is a health food. I'm just telling you this is a source of, lacto, of natural lactobacillus ruteri. Parmesan cheese actually is made, the starter for Parmesan cheese is lactobacillus ruteri. So that's kind of a cool thing if you're creating a little bit on your pasta or whatever it is. Um, now, obviously, uh, uh, and not just, by the way, not just any Parmesan cheese, Parmigiano Reggiano, the real Parmesan cheese, okay, from Italy. It's a, kind of pricey, but oh man, the, the flavor is amazing. You don't need to eat a lot of it to really get this nice flavor, but that's actually made with lactobacillus ruteri. So that's got probiotic uh, type of food. Now, I always tell people when people say, well, wait a minute, are you telling me to eat cheese? I'm saying, no, uh, not all cheeses are created equal. What I'm telling you, there are some cheeses that are actually probiotic cheeses that have some of the good stuff. You do have to watch out for cheese. It can be very salty, okay? And some people with high blood pressure need to worry about that. It can also have a lot of saturated fat, which isn't necessarily good for you. So you want to kind of control and lower the amount of saturated fat. But I'm just telling you, if you're going to reach for a block of cheese uh, uh, from time to time, and you want to know what kind of cheese I should use, I would say go for for taste, go to um, Parmigiano Reggiano for probiotic benefit and lactobacillus ruteri specifically. Go ahead, cheese grate a little bit of that on your stuff. You're not gonna, you're, you're, you're actually gonna benefit your gut microbiome. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. You hear me talking about this in a very excited way because I'm a scientist and I love discovery, and we are discovering more about the healthy parts of our body fat, how to tame our body fat using food, using metabolism, using fasting.